Hey everybody, welcome to another Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins and I'm joined by Corey Bam Bam Barker. Hello. And we are Photoshop User TV. We are sponsored by Kelby One, the folks that bring you Photoshop User Magazine. Right there. We're excited that you're here. We've got another show for you today and we're gonna jump right in and get to the good stuff. Corey, Show us the good stuff. I have some good stuff. Actually, uh, as we mentioned last week, of course, my new book, Dodo, uh, Dodo, 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 <laughs> Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers is out and shipping. In fact, got a copy right here. Looks really cool. Be sure to check it out. You can get it at Amazon.com and of course, Kelby One. Order it wherever you like. Of course, if you order it Kelby One, you'll get a signed copy. Dun dun dun. dun, dun. And, and if fact, you don't have the first one, get both of them because they're that good. Get both, yes. They definitely will be a great bundle, so definitely check that out. But what I have today is actually from the book yet again, and it's just a little snippet from one of the tutorials from um, a, a new chapter I introduced in this one is where I am using images um, given to me by notable photographers. For instance, um, this one is with images done by Moose Peterson, who's doing a lot of aerial photography lately, specifically with war planes. And it's a lot of fun. He sent me some images, and I just did had to play around with it, and it turned out really cool. So, actually, this this is the kind of the, re the result. This is actually what's in the book, and I show you how to take these just standard shots of these aerial planes and just make them look like they're really in the heat of battle. But I just want to show you the fire effect. This, this kind of fire is kind of coming out of the engine here. I just want to show you how I went about creating that because while doing it, I was looking for streaks of fire and stuff like that. And it just it, I found it very difficult. There's a lot of different types of stock images of fire and everything like that, but you really kind of kind of manipulate it and then ultimately it just doesn't look right. So what I ended up doing is using a down and dirty trick. <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that because I was actually looking for one last week for a good fire thing. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have to. I'm just going to steal so, it from you. So uh, um, what I did was I actually have this brush I created, and it's actually part of a free download if you go to the, uh, the companion uh, website for the book. It's, uh, it's just this cloud image. And this was actually shot with my iPhone one day. I was actually driving um, here in Tampa, and I saw the clouds up there, and I, if I just, just to show you what it looks like. So it's just you can just see it's just a little section of a cloud. And the reason I did that is that I wanted to cre create a cloud brush, literally. I wanted to be able to take a part of a cloud, make it a, and then when I wanted to paint clouds, it would work. Turns out it, you, it actually yielded something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to actually size the brush down a little bit. <gasps> Running on reserve power. Plug me in, Pete. I'll please. plug you in. Stat. <laughs> so uh, I have the brush selected. I'm going to jump into the brush options here. And we're going to modify the behavior of this brush. So first thing is we're going to activate Shape Dynamics. Now let me just get my preview here. To reset my workspace, there we go. Brush, there it is. All right, so here in Shape Dynamics, I'm going to set the size jitter uh, control to pen pressure. I am using a pressure sensitive tablet, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. Uh, angle jitter, 100%. I'm going to put that up as well. And scattering. Slight bit of scattering, not too much right there. Now I'm also going to go up into the brush tip shape and just space it out a little bit. Not too much, actually. Let's, so we can see. So, so as you paint, see what that's kind of doing? Creating me a little smoke effect. Not too bad. But I'm also going to activate transfer and set my opacity to pen pressure as well. So now I'll just kind of so what does transfer do? It actually affects the opacity. So if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet, and this is the only time I really use transfer, is that anytime you see a control menu, you see pen pressure, you go in there and you just change it to that. Now this will actually control the opacity as to how hard or how soft I push on it, just like a real pen. If you want a, want a bolder line with a marker, what do you do? You press harder. Same principle here. So I'm going to start painting with white, and I'm just going to kind of paint a streak going across here, and I don't think I need the scattering. I'm actually going to turn that off. So I'm going to turn on the background later so you can see. So I'm just going to start painting just a little streak here. Kind of cool. So now I'm going to add the color to it. So let's add a layer style. First we're going to add an outer glow and set the color to a kind of a hot red. And then we're going to add an inner glow. And we're going to set that color to more of an orange. But then I'm also going to go ahead and change the blend mode to hard light. Look at that. It's already starting to heat up. 
No pun intended. <laughs> Actually, that was a whole lot of pun intended. <laughs> So wow. the beauty of this, of course, is that it is a layer style. So if I continue to add paint, more of those, the effect in here, notice how it gets hotter in the center because we're adding more white and just kind of trails off and gives me that fire effect there. Now, I'm going to turn off the background layer so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to make a new blank layer. I'm not going to change anything about the brush, but notice now we're painting on a layer with no layer style. And I'm also going to set the foreground color to black, and this is just going to be the smoke. It kind of comes out of the fire. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't. It was always burning. Since the world's been turning. So when I did that, when I painted that element on there, it kind of covered up more of the fire element. Notice right here. So here's a cool trick to help blend that. Double click on the layer, open up the blending options here, go down to where it says blend if. Love these blend if sliders. They're just sadly always hidden. So we're going to go into under, underlying layer, and I'm going to hold on the option key and split the highlight slider. And notice it's going to allow me to pull forward a little bit of that lighter area, still letting that dark area kind of blend through, and ultimately gives us that kind of streaky fire look, which, as you can see right here, is that very element I've got going on right here. Coming out of the engine, and then the smoke's just kind of going into the wing and everything like that. You can even add a little blur element to it, but now, what I do is just simply contain these two elements in a smart object, bring it over, and then distort it to conform it to the object. So when you can't find any stock image that will work for you, just create it. Yep. It's going to be much easier and much less frustration. So. Well, and we've had this discussion before. Sometimes you get locked in that, i got to find that perfect image. Mm -hmm. And you'll spend more time trying to find the stock image than actually if you had created it yourself. Mm -hmm. So don't get locked into, oh, i got to find that perfect image. Maybe it might be faster. Maybe it might be faster. Maybe it might be faster. Maybe All it right. might be faster to make it yourself. Let us take a quick break. We're going to come back, talk about a few more things. Pete's got something, so stay with us. We'll be right here. <laughs> My name's Tim Wallace. I work as a commercial photographer. I'm based in the UK. Cars fascinate me. They're almost like people. They're like characters. They have a personality. Photography is about creating one single image that gets that message across. It doesn't matter what the shoot is. The finished image is in my head before I even start. Just look at the whole aspect of just light and creating a mood and creating something different. I like people to look at it and be inspired. It's up to me to create an image that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and think, I want to be that person next to that car. So my name's Tim Wallace. Come and check out my courses on Inspired Light and Automotive Photography. Hi everyone, welcome back. Now, just want to take a minute real quick and talk about what we call the Super Bowl of Photoshop events, and that is Photoshop World coming up in April. It's April 8th through the 10th in Atlanta, Georgia. The first time we're going to be in Atlanta, we couldn't be more excited. Pete's going to be there, I'm going to be there. A whole host of some of the best Photoshop and photography instructors anywhere. We're all going to be there. If you haven't been, you really owe it to yourself to go experience what it's like, and you'll probably come back again and again because it really is so motivational and inspirational, and that's about the only other all I know is, uh, boy, it's I killed that. That was horrible. I apologize to the watching audience. I'm sorry. He's okay. <laughs> but just want to make sure that uh, I don't know what date it is right now, but if you have not, if it is not March 17th right now, you have time to save $100 on the registration by going to photoshopworld.com. Register now. You'll save $100. bucks. But if it's after March 17th right now, you're out of luck. Sorry. Anyway, we're going to press on, and Pete's got something I believe is a continuation. Uh, if you remember from last week, he was doing some cool stuff with those plane images, and I believe he's got We're more. just going plane crazy here at Photoshop User. And this was the original image I should have mentioned last week. This is my friend Larry Grace sent this to me and asked me if there was something I could do with it. We probably, if you're like me, have a bunch of images that you've taken different places and you want to do something with them. Well, here's, you got a shot of this great plane. What do you do with it? And I showed you last week how to cut it out, how to add the prop blur so we get to this point right here now you want to find that background to put it on and let me show you kind of a tip that I use uh, 
when I'm trying to figure things out. Here you can see I brought the plane in, but what I've done, if you look on the side here, is I have a whole bunch of different cloud shots and things that I have either already had in my stock portfolio or I downloaded comp images. And this is where you'll go to your stock sites like photolia.com or stock iStockphoto, and you can download a comp image. It's a low-res image, and it's usually got their watermark on it, but you can bring those in, and even though they're not real crisp, you can see how they'll work. And what I've done now is I've put this plane on here with a bunch of different backgrounds, and now I can see how it's going to look sitting in those backgrounds. So I wouldn't necessarily have to go in and buy any of these backgrounds till I found the one that works really well. That one's not bad right there, so I may highlight that one. Then I come in and, uh, you know, and each one of them has its pros and its cons. But here's another little tip for you that will help. A lot of times when you're looking at these things, color balance can mess you up and this, you'll throw out a background because it may be cool and your object may be warm. I put in a, uh, a new layer up top and I just added a hue saturation adjustment layer above it that turned it no saturation, it turned it black and white. So now I'm just looking at the details and how they would work together. So before, let's say that one's okay, but that one, the coloring would mess you up. You put that on there and now you go, well, hey, that could work. And this gives you a little bit better idea of how the two elements work together without color interacting with it. So now I could just go through, and this would be a great exercise for you to do to find the right backgrounds. Because sometimes you think you've got a good idea for what kind of background it is, and you put it in these different backgrounds, and one of them will just jump out and sing to you and go, yeah, that's the one you want. That's not the one I want for that one, as a matter of fact. I did this originally. I put all these on a layer, and then I had about six or seven different airplanes that I scrolled through and found which airplanes fit with the background the best. And I decided that one was a pretty good background that I wanted to use. So then I take it from there, I find the one I want, and once I get it in position and all, here's another little finishing trick for the final image that you're gonna use. We're gonna talk about putting it on something like paper and adding texture and stuff in a minute. But do the, we call it the claw, Command or Control, Option or Alt, Shift and E. It's four buttons, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a new layer, as soon as I highlight the right one, it's gonna create a new layer on top of everything else. And you can see it's just a copy right there. And now, what I love to do to finish up most of my images is now bring them back to Camera Raw as a filter. And Corey's computer agrees with me there. And what I can do now, once I get the image how I like it, I can now adjust the temperature and add clarity. And even what I like to do is add maybe a little bit of grain so that it really solidifies how the, the image goes together. So first of all, put it on a background, figure out which background works the best, but then think about maybe taking it back into Camera Raw and making some global adjustments to everything. And then once you're done, you just simply hit OK, and now you've got your image ready to place it in whatever type of thing you want, which I'm going to show you on next episode show of how you can place it into some grungy paper, add some different elements, and you're all done in no time. I think it's another thing people don't think about is that they always think Camera Raw is a front end right. thing. And you can always, when you're done, even especially with composites, bring it into Camera Raw and you can apply a lot of photograph to get that kind of photographic look on a composite, it certainly is. Well, well now with CC that it's a filter, it's just so handy to be able to use, much like you talked about in the last one about mm -hmm. applying the HDR toning to mm -hmm. it. It's a great way to really round off your image. Okay. So don't think, don't forget to use Camera Raw as a filter to add to your image. Makes you wonder if HDR toning would really make that look cool. <laughs> <laughs> More experimenting, all right. All right, we're just gonna wrap things up. We've got another Peach Pit deal this week. It's a Photographer's MBA, Senior High School Portraits. Remember last week, they, they have plenty because it's an e-book. Bye, Sal Sincata. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Go to peachpet.com slash Kelby1, enter the Kelby code, or the, yeah, the Kelby code, enter the code <laughs> Kelby1, and you will get uh, a great deal on that. And of course, we have the contest. Pete, what do we have for a giveaway today? Well, we surprisingly have. enough, we are going to be giving away this fabulous new book by this young upstart author, Corey Barker. So if you haven't gotten Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers Part 2, 
We're giving that away this week. So make sure you go over to the website, go to kelby1.com slash contest and go over there and sign up for your name, leave a comment, and you could win Corey's book. And of course it will be a signed copy. I was going to say, I bet we could get him to I sign it too. I will find the time to go ahead and put my signature on it. There we have it. So, so that's it. We're that done for this week. Come back, join us next week. I'm going to finish up this image. Corey's got some great new stuff for us, probably coming from his book. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. You have and a trilogy. Uh, I know, I'm doing a you trilogy. Did, you're doing yeah. the Lord of the Rings of Photoshop stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Take care.